Welcome to Lecture 18 of Biology 115 entitled Human Genetics. In this lecture, for the first time, we're actually going to be starting to look at real-life human genetic diseases and disorders and their sort of origins, let's say. And in order to understand human genetics, we're going to start with this first flowchart and just entitle it um, Introduction. So this is just a basic introduction to human genetics, just to give us a good framework for what we're about to talk about. In human genetics, the basic idea is the following. Human genetics is the study of inherited, we'll write this down, the study of inherited, so there's the genetics part, inherited variants in humans. So variants in humans. In simple terms, what we're studying in human genetics is the variation that we see and that the variation that is inherited within us and ourselves as humans. And in order to study this, we have to sort of overcome some basic problems of this study. In order to study human genetics, we have to figure out a way beyond the following problems. So we'll say problems of study. And when we say study, we mean the study of human genetics. Well, unlike Mendel when he observed, let's say, the pea plants, or unlike Thomas Hunt Morgan when he observed in his model organism of the Drosophila, we as humans oftentimes, for the most part, as compared to those other uh, experimental organisms, have very few offspring maybe two, maybe three, you could sometimes have more, sometimes have even less. So this is a fundamental problem of studying genetics within humans. There aren't that many offspring to study and manipulate. In addition to that, we as humans have a very long generation span. Meaning that, unlike flies, let's say, where we constantly have generation after generation after generation, we cannot do that with humans because we as humans, uh, when we're studying this, are also going to eventually die if we try to study a long span of generations because we ourselves are humans trying to study ourselves. So if you're trying to figure out an 80-year study when you are starting as a 20-year-old, you're probably not going to be able to overcome that problem of long gen gen generation spans in this situation. In addition, there are some ethical issues. We cannot, we cannot, it's not possible, it's not right, to experimentally mate humans. Okay? I know that's a bit obvious, but think about it. You can't experimentally mate humans because this is simply unethical. Okay? You cannot force humans to mate with each other for the cause of science, and this is also, believe it or not, it's pretty believable. It's actually illegal in almost every which way in any which country you look at. So these are basic problems we as right now human geneticists have to overcome. So how do we study human genetics? So let's look at that. How do we actually study human genetics? So how to study, let's say, HG for human genetics if these problems need to be dealt with? Well, what we can do is we can actually just work with what we got meaning that we can do something that many geneticists do, which is analyze um, large extended families, let's say. We can see what's already available in our, let's say, um, environment of humans and just analyze things that are like large extended families. These are already there. We didn't have to manipulate them. These are natural products of the environment. So over here, we have this benefit of the fact that matings have already happened. So we'll say mating, matings uh, happened. We'll say matings happened, we'll say already, just as a side note for our own knowledge. So if the matings happened already, we don't have to worry about long generation spans or the few offspring. We just work with what we got. That's what I like to think of when I say analyze large extended families. In addition, in order to study human genetics, one of the best ways to look at our genes is to look at the abnormal. Not the normal, but the abnormal. And what I mean by that is that we as a geneticist who studies humans can look at human genetic disorders to learn a whole plethora of information about human genes altogether. Because when we look at the abnormal, let's say at the disorders, we get a much better understanding of what is normal and thus have a greater appreciation of what is normal. 
Now, in order to do this, a very common technique is to use DNA sequencing, and that's something you should be very comfortable with based off of our previous DNA technology lecture. So there is the cumulative nature of biology popping up one more time. We look at human genetic disorders. How do we look at these genes? Use something like DNA sequencing. Really fancy, good method of figuring out what human genetics is all about. And lastly, the one last idea that we can understand about this introduction is as a human geneticist, you can actually do something called pedigree analysis. This is a great, great way to understand human genes. It's a very simple way. Basically, a pedigree analysis is simply the, analyze, the analysis, let's say, of a family tree. You oftentimes will see a pedigree and it will literally resemble a family tree which will give you information. It will basically, basically provide you a picture of, let's say, inheritance patterns. It will tell you what mom had and what dad had and what their parents had and what uncle has and what aunt has. So this is all just a big picture of inheritance patterns available to us if we look at a pedigree or a family tree. And the great thing about this is that this is actually over several generations. So what problem have we combated by just looking at a pedigree? This one right here, long generation spans, or even the few offspring problem, we already have it there because we utilize a family tree. You can basically state that in this How to Study Human Genetics, when we analyze large and extended families with matings that already happened, we're basically doing this. We're looking at a family tree and analyzing what is known as a pedigree. So a pedigree, it's a nice picture in your textbook of a pedigree, can otherwise be simply known as a family tree that displays the following listed here. In addition, pedigree analysis is a great thing that many genetic counselors use. So we'll say it's used by genetic counselors. Now, of course, you all are not genetic counselors. Maybe you will be one day. But genetic counselors have this ability through a pedigree to know something very, very critical. And remember, human genetics is the study of inherited variants in humans. In pedigree analysis, when a genetic counselor sees a pedigree, sees a family tree, they very, they almost, they 100% know certain phenotypes. They absolutely are able to tell that Bob, who is the son of Mark and Melissa, um, he has a brown hair phenotype. And I can also tell you what Bob and Melissa have as a phenotype simply because I can see them on the pedigree, I can see them on the family tree, and thus I can see what their phenotype in question is. And from this, we get this great ability, which I find really, really cool, to actually be able to predict certain things. If we know the phenotype, we can actually predict what we call inheritance patterns. So we'll say we predict inheritance patterns and by that, look what we did here, study of inherited variants in humans. I think we're definitely doing that if we're looking at a pedigree and analyzing a pedigree because we're predicting inheritance patterns that will eventually be based on, let's say, the genotype, okay, based on genotype at a specific locus, let's say, like hair color. So overall, in this introduction of human genetics, we have an understanding that this is a very complex study, mainly because we have these problems, but these problems can be dealt with through these steps in studying human genetics. Overall, in order to study human genetics, we're trying to figure out how this inherited variation within us as humans, this relevancy is really, really strong in this lecture, sort of plays out in nature. And a good way to understand that are through techniques that look at disorders like DNA sequencing and overall pedigree analysis is also a great way. So we'll continue our discussion on human genetics and get into the nitty gritty details as we move forward in this lecture series.